The presidential election of 1844, Henry Clay of Kentucky versus James Polk of Tennessee. We'll examine two campaign banners that help bring to life this very close contest. So the 1844 election is um, the start of kind of the sectional crisis for the coming of the Civil War. We have Henry Clay, the Whig candidate from Lexington, Kentucky, um, on his third presidential run, trying to hold the Whigs together to think about internal improvements. And then you have James K. Polk, the Democrat from Tennessee, who is not interested in internal improvements and um, is running to protect slavery. History records that Henry Clay of Kentucky lost the election for president. A now controversial Clay nickname had a very different meaning in 1844. So in the 21st century, the word coon is a slur, and it's not something that we would use or should use. Um, at the time, it was a nickname for Clay. They called Clay an old coon, that he was kind of as both shifty and useless as an old um, raccoon would be. The Whigs were um, seen that way. And so the Democrats are using this. They are using it as a derogatory term towards Clay, but it's not racialized as we would racialize, as that word is racialized today. So we have a banner, a Clay banner, a pro-Clay banner that was preserved and has been um, restored, as well as a pro-Polk banner. Uh, both of these are, were parade, we believe, were paraded um, in support of their candidates. They're done by women, which is what is actually very interesting about them to me. So in 1844, women in Kentucky cannot vote in presidential elections. They ostensibly don't have political power, but they're marching, they're making banners, they're participating in the process under these, uh, with these two pieces, and we have them. The eminent Kentucky historian James Cotter has a new biography of Henry Clay, and he claims that if women could vote in 1844, Clay would have been president because women liked Clay. And he was attractive and he was all of these things. And so um, we see then the ways that women are a part of the political process, even when they are kept from the ballot. To learn more about these artifacts, visit us online at history.ky.gov. From the Kentucky History Center and Museums in downtown Frankfurt, I'm Doug High.